Hello friends and my dear students, I am Dr. Darwin here and today I am here to discuss about very important topic which is nothing but post tonsillectomy hemorrhage. You know this topic is not only important for postgraduate students who do tonsillectomy in day to day practice but yes it is a very important topic for all undergraduates as this is a very commonly asked scenario. Now when we start this discussion you know tonsillectomy hemorrhage is divided into three important categories. So first category is primary hemorrhage which occurs at a time of surgery, reactionary hemorrhage which occurs in immediate post-operative period that means approximately 4 to 24 hours of surgery and then comes a secondary hemorrhage where most important reason is infection or sepsis. Now as you can see in this slide that how management differs when type of hemorrhage changes. So we can see how patient is being managed in primary hemorrhage, reactionary hemorrhage and secondary hemorrhage. So friends when we talk about important warning signs in post tonsillectomy hemorrhage by which we recognize these patients. So what are these? Now you can see that majority of these patients are kids rather than adults. So that means patient is not able to speak. So what you should be looking for is you should look for repeated swallowing movements. That means patient is swallowing blood. Number two important thing is that sometimes patient can directly spit red fresh blood. And yes, last important thing is sometimes you know when patient lies in left lateral position because you know important position in post tonsillectomy period is left lateral position with head low so that it blood is not going into stomach and blood is coming into oral cavity and we are able to do suctioning clear so it is head low and uh, left lateral position so here it is important that patient may bleed through nasal cavity or through oral cavity but yes most important thing is repeated swelling movements so when we talk about this flow chart now if you see this flow chart in primary hemorrhage in reactionary hemorrhage and in secondary hemorrhage what protocol we follow so if you see different different literature you will find different things so somebody may use adenine in gauze piece, somebody may use surgicel, somebody does cauterization, somebody does vessel ligation or somebody uses monopolar or bipolar cautery so so on. So there are so many uh, treatment modalities. When we look at tonsillar blood supply, so let's see this picture. You can all see that tonsil has got extensive blood supply which comes from external carotid artery branches. So it is facial artery, lingual artery, descending palatine from maxillary and ascending pharyngeal artery. So all these four arteries they give blood supply to tonsil and there is a very important vein known as paratonsillar vein. Now here I want to show you very important interpretation of an American periodic otolaryngology survey which shows that in majority of a post tonsillectomy bleeds we go for operative management rather than conservatives. That means this is not our direct aim to go for surgery but yes many times these patients they need exploration and achievement of hemostasis. At last my dear students I want to give you a very important flow chart showing crux of how do you manage a post tonsillectomy hemorrhage. So this slide is most important. So whenever you encounter any case of post tonsillectomy hemorrhage remember check vitals establish an IV line think about resuscitation of this patient you know you are going to treat patient once patient is alive you are not going to treat a dead body so that is very important and I have already told you that post tonsillectomy patients we make them to lie in left lateral position head low so that whatever bleeding is coming patient is able to spit it out so this is very important second important thing is that you divide these patients into two important categories one is cooperative patients second is uncooperative patients you know majority of our patients are uncooperative patients that means kids so that means most of these patients you cannot ask these patients to do gargles you cannot put pack in oral cavity of 
these patients so that means most of a time you have to take these patients to operation theater to achieve hemostasis rather than doing any local maneuver whereas when patient is cooperative like adult patient you can use some adenalin gauze piece you can put here and you can wait or you can ask these patients to do hydrogen peroxide gargles or you can put some surge cell piece which is oxidized cellulose a very good hemostatic agent so treatment differs whether uncooperative or cooperative patient next important thing is that whenever we go to operation theater remember whenever we are able to see any clot we have to remove this clot and then identify bleeder so either we can use monopolar cautery or bipolar cautery preferably bipolar cautery and we have to ligate that bleeder right so you can use cautery or you can ligate bleeder otherwise also that depends upon comfort of a surgeon but important thing is that remove this clot next important thing is when we go to operation theater what do we do we remove blood clot we identify bleeder either we do cautery that is monopolar or bipolar cautery or we have to sometimes ligate this bleeder also but yes remember suppose treatment maneuver fails then what do we do we have to suture sometime anterior and posterior tonsillar pillars by putting some surge cell or any other hemostatic agent last most important thing nowadays is you know uh, we have very good techniques like digital subtraction angiography to identify bleeders and in this technique we can also go for embolization so all our students must be knowing about embolization and yes if embolization facilities are not available you know tonsil is splied from all branches of eca so we can also think in terms of eca ligation dear students this embolization and eca ligation is very very rarely required most of the time we are able to do cautery or ligate this bleeder under general anesthesia so you will not be requiring these high ended modalities so this is most important flow chart which i have given you in this last slide please go for it and i hope this particular presentation has helped you a lot thank you very much